Thank you for joining us today for 10 Minutes with the Artist, an episodic series that explores the art practice and the personal vision that guides artists. On today's episode, we're very proud to have Sean Rolfes, who is completing his master's at North Dakota State University in architecture. We invited him here today to speak about his research, as well as the creation of artifacts in preparation for his defense. Sean's work examines the intersection of participation, performance, and personality in the modern public space. His work asks how we negotiate the spaces that we've built for us and the spaces we've created between each other. We'll be speaking about that and much more today on 10 Minutes with the Artist. Thank you so very much, Sean, for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist. I was curious, is all public space performative in some way? I think so. Like, it goes down to even, like, the fashion that we wear. We dress up for the day. We prepare ourselves for the day, and then we go out into the day. So I feel like every single time we go out into public space, we're always performing a role, and that creates the sense of thea theatrical sense of public space, in my opinion. So I'd say yes. Like, I always dress up, and I'm always goth, and, like, when I go into public space, I'm like, I'm goth today. I don't know. I think so. So you think that, uh, do you actually represent a specific emotion or uh, feeling, or um, do people try to remain pretty consistent in their identity? I feel like it's pretty consistent. I don't know. I feel like we all have our own tastes and our flares. Um, granted, though, public spaces, they create these dialogues that we're not prepared for, and that's what I like to explore within my thesis is that we are creating all these random dialogues with strangers that we might never see again. And that's the interesting part of public space. It's not necessarily like what we prepare ourselves for. It's kind of like the spontaneous interactions that we run into, like on our way to class, on our way to work, on our way to the car. It's, yeah. it's the interactions that makes this public space interesting in my opinion. Yeah. Not necessarily like what you're preparing for, but what happens. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm interested in is not only what we do now, but maybe what we have done over time. So have different cultures <clears throat> defined intimacy and vulnerability different in public space than maybe we do in a larger urban contemporary center? I think so. Like Hajime, um, my friend, talked to me after the thesis, uh, after the art gallery show, and he was saying that in the subways in Tokyo, people tend to be more reserved, like it's quiet, like the subways in Japan are quiet when compared to if you go on the subways in Chicago, they're loud. It's just, it's very different. Like intimacy in different places are very different. For example, like in Toronto, where my thesis is, it's very loud as well. People help each other out always. We're in like the public spaces and the subway systems in Chicago, it's a little bit more hostile in my opinion, where people are a little bit more reserved. They'll help out, but they don't want to really. So I feel like it is, it does vary on cultures for sure. Especially like especially when we compare like Japanese and American cultures when it comes to public transportation. They're a lot more reserved. They don't like to talk to people on the subways where here we like we do the same but we're a little bit more hostile about it in my opinion. Yeah. Do you think that you're defining this difference because you've experienced the opposite and you're like making the hostility an extreme? Or do you think yeah. that that's actually the culture of the place and yeah. the space. Yeah, the reason why I chose it is because I, like, I just like to I watch people, I think, more than others, especially on the subways, and I like to wander. I like to be, I like to run into random encounters on the subway systems, and I like to see how people interact. Like, I like, I'm always listening to music, but I'm always, like, looking around at the same time, where others tend to be staring down at their phone. I like to look up a little bit more than others, I think. Mm -hmm. So I like to see what other people are doing a little bit more. Yeah. It's fun. Well, speaking of that, I'm kind of curious about being hyper aware of your body, especially in a public space. Mm -hmm. Does, are there certain parts of the body that we're more hyper aware of? And does that change depending on the gender or your identity? Oh, for sure, I think so. Um, I don't know if I know of any specifics right now, but like going back to the fashion sense, like. We're always preparing ourselves for what we are expecting to happen in public space, but in reality, it's anything can happen. And so I do think people try to prepare themselves, but in the end, it's really spontaneous. 
So, yeah. How about the parts of the body that, uh, besides the clothing, which is our outer layer, mm -hmm. um, the hands, the eyes, the feet, whatever, is there something that, um, maybe a gesture that we make that is representative of how we're hyper aware of that, or? Yeah, I kind of, I like to play off of like the sense of eye contact and how people like to look away. So in reality, it's like a lot more face, facial Can you like look gestures. me in the eye when you're telling me this, please? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so I feel like when people like are in public space, they like tend to look away when they accidentally make eye contact where mm -hmm. others might stare instead. And I like to play with that sense of, it's almost like erotic and intimate mm -hmm. in public space that people don't like to encounter anymore. And I think that's really fun to explore. That's yeah. kind of why I did the, my thesis like that. Yeah. My art gallery show. Hmm. So mm -hmm. in your artifact, you have a bunch of materials that are transparent. You have the clothing. You also have this material in between. Is there some sort of, does the transparency represent something? Does the material represent something? Yeah, I kind of played with like the transparency just to show how we feel almost naked when we're in public space. And that's kind of why I wanted to show like the body a little bit more, just, mm -hmm. to, sh just to expose the sense of anxiety, like make it a little bit more static, make it a little bit more visible and how people feel on the inside, on the outside in reality. That's kind of, that's why I did that transparency and then the layering almost, yeah. just show the constriction and then how we see each other. I was looking at it, I think not only like that, but I was also thinking about making uh, energy visible mm. in some way. Um, because when we're interacting in some way, I'm giving off some sort of energy you are too. Um, and the same thing, and you notice from social cues, maybe that person's energy. Um, so I was curious whether or not it, that sort of material could represent something that was unseen mm. as well. I don't know about energy, um, but the reason why I chose the vinyl is that it doesn't stretch at all and how it really constricts you. Like you can't really move that well in the fabric like that. Um, I didn't really think of any energy sources from that, but in reality, I wanted to play with like constriction and how we feel in public space. Okay. So I was curious why the stairs, there's a bunch of different ways that the body can interact with space. Mm -hmm. And the stairs is a very specific um, metaphor in a way. Yeah. So could you talk about why you chose stairs? Yeah. So, and the reason why, I, yeah, so I chose stairs is to show, um, it's kind of playing with the sense, the depth of the subway system and how you always have to either ascend or descend into the depths of the subways. And I made them modular just to show, so you can expand and contract them to show the sense of time and how time may change in public space and how we see time. Mm -hmm. For example, someone on the subway reading a book, being comfortable, they might experience time a little bit faster than someone who's like being stared at. Um, they might fe feel super uncomfortable, so they might experience time a little bit longer than someone who's comfortable in public space. So that's kind of why I was playing with like the modularity and how you can stretch and contract the staircase just to show time and how that can change in public yeah. space. Hmm. Well, are you ready for the lightning round, Sean? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okie doke. Uh, what time of the day do you feel like you're most creative? Oh, at like 11 p.m. 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. It's like really crank stuff out at that time. Okay. For sure. Do you listen to music or anything like that when you're creating? Oh, yeah. I'm always listening to music or podcasts. Always. I don't do Netflix that often because that's not productive, in okay. my opinion. Okay. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Half of our audience just turned it off. I know. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> They're watching it on Netflix. Uh, do you listen to anything specific? Oh, um... It really varies. Like, I went through a weird Lana Del Rey phase a week ago, and now I'm going through, like, my... I'm listening to a lot of Massive Attack. Like, I listen to a lot of, like, drone music, a lot of industrial, like, electronic music, such as, like, Tim Hecker. Um, Boards of Canada is super good, too. But, yeah, listen to music that you can, like, rock your head to a lot. Okay. Is there... Uh, speaking of rocking your head, uh, is there any uh, thing that you're reading? Um, I'm kind of reading a ton of books right now, just due to my teacher, but... I really want to dive back into, there's a book called um, Dark Age Ahead by Jane Jacobs. Mm -hmm. I'm only right about halfway through it, and it was seriously so good. But I want to get back into that book right now. But I'm also rereading Nausea by Andre Brayton. That's a super good book, too. Like, oh, it's a really short read, too. Okay. It's fabulous. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you know that you're finished with a piece? 
like architecture wise or like oh god I'm never finished like even when I like I like I always go back on my old projects and I always tweak it a little bit and then I like redo it in Photoshop I'm never done okay it's 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 a challenge but I feel like it's very relevant to a lot of other people though you can always improve in reality yeah mm -hmm. um if you had to work in a different medium than maybe the one that you're working in now, mm. what do you think that you'd work in? Um, like, I'm trying to push, like, fashion with my, like, architecture degree, actually. Like, I kind of want to work for, like, I really, that would be, like, ideally. Like, mm -hmm. I really want to work for people who make clothes. I don't want to become a designer. I just want to work for people who are designers. I just like the bridge between art and fashion. They're very similar to me. Like, especially when you make, an, like, a piece, you create patterns, and then you put all those patterns together, and they're just, like, elevations in architecture. Like, you take every view of the building and you just put it together. Yeah. I don't know. I see they're very similar to me, and that's kind of why I did my artifact with clothing as well. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. So, I guess my last question would be, what's next? I don't know. We'll see. I'm just going to... We'll see after thesis. I don't really care until after that's due. <laughs> we'll have a uh, to be continued. Yeah, uh... I'm definitely not going to be in Fargo much longer, though. Okay. That's for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Of uh, course. <laughs> thank you so very much uh, for your time. And I'd like to thank our guest, Sean. And I'd also like to thank you for your interest in the professional practice and creative explorations happening here at North Dakota State University. So for everyone here at the Memorial Union Gallery, keep creative.